Hello and welcome to part two of this Vox AC50. So we're going to be looking at this problem we've got with this over vaulting on the capacitors and we're actually going to have a look at what is causing it. So I've disconnected this capacitor here. The, this is one of the caps that's on the bias before the, uh, the diode for the bias there. And I've got 40 watt bulb in the current limiter. So if you remember what, what was happening with this, if you've not seen part one, basically when you switch this amp on, the plate voltage rises to 540 volts before the tubes start to conduct. And obviously these caps are only rated for 500 volts. So we're getting 540 volts hitting them. Now, that is being caused by this bias arrangement and we'll have a look at the schematic. So we're going to have a look, before we look at the schematic, we're going to have a look at this capacitor. Now I've removed it and I've got a 40 watt bulb on the current limiter. That we're, going to, we're just going to, in fact, wait to help, if I plug the thing in, that would give us better results. If we switch on, so now you can see the, the, the voltage going up there. We've got no tubes in it, by the way. So we've got 438 volts there. Now, if I push this cap down onto there, look at the plate voltage begin to climb. And we go over 500 volts. So if I flick that off again, you can see now the plate volts is dropping and drops below there. And now you can see the plate voltage going down. Better use the pliers. So now if I push that back on, look, you see the plate voltage quickly rises over 500 volts. That's the problem. So now we've got that disconnected and we've had a look at actually what's causing it. I'm going to turn off the current limiter. And what we're going to do now is we are, I'm just going to plug the amp straight in with no current limiter and see what, what we get voltage wise now. And there we go, 480 volts. And we're getting 237.6 from the wall outlet. Now the one thing you must be careful of when you're doing this is this voltage left in the caps and you can see it slowly draining away. So you need something to dissipate all that away and uh, we're gonna use this very large resistor. So we've got the meter on there and that is monitoring the HT voltage. So what I decided to do was just check and just see what that voltage would go up to. Now, of course, I can't do that at 240 volts because I'll, I'll exceed the caps. So what if I go to 110 and then we just, we're working half. So if I go up on here and you can't see that I've got, a, I've got two bulbs in the current limiter of 40 and of 15 so I've got 55 watts of current limiting and now I'm pushing this up to 110 volts on here there we go so we've got 110 volts now as you can see that voltage is climbing up and it doesn't look nothing looks particularly alarming but just watch it go And this is what would happen if someone just switched this amp on with no app, with no tubes in it. So why would you do that? Well, if you were testing the amp before you put the tubes in, I, I bring everything up on a current limiter and a variac so I don't get that problem. But if you just plug this in, if you're working on this amp and you've done quite a lot of work and you think, oh, I'll just switch, I'll just switch it on and test it with the tubes out, this is the problem you'll get. Now I'm at 110 volts on the mains and we've already got 386 volts. So if you times that by two, we've already exceeded and we're now nearly up to 390 volts. So now with this amp with plugged into the power at full 240 volts 
it wouldn't go up there straight away it would crawl up there but within a short time being with within a minute you would have 800 volts and climbing and you can see that that is still climbing now if we disconnect that that first capacitor on the bias which if we look on here which is this one that will stop climbing and will fall back to about 470 well 470 volts at 240 so it would be half of that and still climbing so now there's over 800 volts there so in my opinion that circuit is a serious flaw it's okay as long as the tubes are in it it'll draw down so what happens on this amp if you get a filament failure the, let's say the filament winding on the power transformer goes open the tubes will stop conducting all of the tubes will stop conducting and that plate voltage will just go up and up that B plus sorry will just go up and up very quickly at 240 volts much quicker than it's going up now 840 volts we've reached now and it's still climbing now what would happen because the current would go off it but the caps would just get that 800 volts question is how long would they stand that for now pushing up to 850 volts look still going and it's just more or less come to rest there now still creeping look so pushing up to 850 volts that's what you'd have at 240 volts on those capacitors if the filaments went open it suddenly dawned on me as well that when I was studying this schematic and, I'd, and I really don't know why it didn't when I was working on the amp probably because I'd got the whole of the amp on my mind as well not just this way now I've only got this problem but this ha this amp but this amp doesn't have a center tap for the AC and that is the problem so looking here you can see this is where the, the bias is connecting off from on this AC line but if you look here you've you've got this is ground on the bridge rectifier and then you've got the diode here so you've already got DC coming off of there when it goes into here you've already got DC voltage so these capacitors what they're doing with this capacitor layout and this diode is they're reversing that voltage so it's negative voltage but, but these caps are interfering with this power supply and pushing more voltage through here right let's have a look now And there we are, you can see that's sorted the problem. So how have we done that? So I've added this varista on here, which is 80 ohms. Now I, I put in an eight, 82 ohm resistor, I tested some resistors in here to, to get a, a, a voltage drop that would work with this 500 volts before everything started to conduct. And 80 volts seemed to be about right. So this, Eight, what this varista does is it starts off at 80 volts and then as the current increases and the heat, heat in it increases the, the, the resistance drops so when this is first switched on this it drops it about six or eight volts so what happens when this gets really hot and has been running for a, three or four minutes 
that voltage gradually drops and then there's only like one volt between the mains and what um, and the and the varista so that's solved the problem so if if you've got one of these amps and you're using it on a gig and suddenly the sound goes you look around and the pilot lights still on turn the amp off straight away don't spend time looking through your leads and your effects or whatever just turn the amp off because if the filament winding has gone open then that voltage will crawl up and up and up until it reaches 850 volts as we saw in the video and obviously the caps won't be in very good shape after it's had that on it and if you think about it you're testing all your leads you, is it your effects this you got one thing or another and three or four minutes has gone by and those caps have been cooking now they've not had any current on them but they've still had the voltage on them this amp the last time this amp was repaired the last tech said the caps were all blown in it so I don't know but anyway that's all I go on is facts and, and what I've found now that looking more into this this is the problem this amp this this mains transformer on this amplifier the power transformer has no center tap on the HT supply now normally if you have a transformer with no HT supply you have a separate winding for the bias something like I don't know 60 volts 70 volts something like that and that's the problem with this set out whoever's done this designed this years ago has made a bit of a, a flaw there now the chances of the filaments going open is quite rare to, you know and that is a, a good hefty transformer so the chances of, of those but they do fail from time to time you know filaments do fail filament windings in transformers if it fails this amp's got big problems now no one's probably ever come across that before there's not many of these amps about probably none of them the, fil the filament voltage has ever failed and this one may never fail but it's it if they fail there is a serious problem with this amp 850 volts will arrive on those capacitors now the the uh, some comments people left comments and things and, and some of them were were valid points so one comment would have been to have doubled these caps to a, a thousand volts end of problem but of course this is a vintage amp where you're going to mount them you can't start drilling holes in this it's a vintage amp the, the customer's not going to be happy if I start drilling holes in this same on the other side where, where are you going to mount those other two caps the, the tubes are on there the bias pots are on there it, even if you could mount some it, it it would be difficult you know to find space for them and again I'd be drilling holes into the chassis we can't be doing that on on a vintage amp so that would have been ideal really had we have been able to have done that and obviously that i would have done that because that would have been the most logical thing to do but unfortunately on this amp we can't but it's up and running now and it's all it's all finished so we're all done we buy us new tubes in it it's it's all ready to go to the customer but it has been problematic this one because obviously coming across that problem I've, I have spent some time trying to solve it and in the end the, the you know I've looked at other circuits possible ways of wiring it and I'm sure that some of you guys out there you know will would have probably found a way that you know as I've said before I am a competent tech there is some guys out there that are far more advanced at, at this than I am I, re, I repair amplifiers and I make them safe and send them back out for people to use that's what I do you know designing circuits and intricate things like that I don't really do I'll 
delve and you know and I'll look at schematics and if somebody gives me a schematic of a complex circuit I'll wire it up I've got you know, no problems with that but you know designing a circuit that it for this amp that doesn't that's an engineer's thing and uh, I'm just a amp repair tech I'm not an engineer I'm not a guy that designs amplifiers I'm a guy that repairs amplifiers and I leave the design into uh, people who are skilled at that. So there we go. So th that'll do it for this. Been a bit of a strange part two, this one, really. Uh, we've had a listen to the amp before, so I'm not going to do another demo. Thanks for watching. You all take care. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye for now.